会，然后系啦，然后让唔系阿涂紧新议员，涂紧新副主席系，已经同副主席沟通咗啦，咁佢答应系可以帮忙嘅，系啦。<笑>救人啊！救人啊嘛！好，各位同事早晨。Good morning, members. We have a quorum, and we've passed the appointed hour. The meeting is now called to order.、Um, please invite the officials into this room. Well, I have to declare interest as usual. I own property, and I'm an accountant. My、um, employer also engage in tax、uh, advice. Including、uh, stamp duty and related taxation advice, I'm not involved in such work. In,、uh, Mr. Wang Ting Kong,、uh, as usual, I made declaration. Mr.、Uh, Andrew Leung, yes, I declared what I have declared. Mr. Abraham Shek, I do the same. Kenneth, I do the same. Thank you. Now, please note that.、Uh, oh, rather,、uh, Mr. Tony Chair. Yes, I declare interest as I have declared before. There is an emergency notice, and I thank the vice chairman、uh, for agreeing、uh, to chair this meeting after he has finished his meeting at 11.、Uh, we will continue with our meeting. I think I and Mr. Leung、uh, have to go.、Um, Let us、um, discuss members'、uh, questions. In fact, the administration has prepared a paper, paper CB one three six nine, thirteen fourteen, and bracket O one and O two. If I may invite the administration to introduce a paper, and then members may ask their questions. Yes, Mabel, please. Thank you, Chairman and members. Uh, paper CB one three six nine thirteen fourteen stroke break uh rather bracket O one and O two um concerning the two documents um I will um highlight the main points and response to members' questions at our previous meeting.、Uh, several members asked the administration. To、um, further respond to the question of how do we respond to the changes in the property market, and also the indicators we consider, the administration attaches importance to the developments in the property market.、Um, we consider many factors. We have to consider the、uh, situation comprehensively. The factors we consider include the performance of the property market, such as uh, the uh, turnover in the residential market and the non-residential market, the property uh, prices indicators, and、uh, affordability, home purchase affordability. And that is reflected in the mortgage to income ratio.、And、we will look at that percentage. We also pay attention to interest rate and amount of mortgages, and also the risks of、um, doing um. Engaging in、um, such mortgages, we look at、um, the number of mortgages. Now, at present, interest rate is low, and we need to consider the trend of the interest rate, and we need to consider the、um, risk of、um, mortgaging. These are the indica major indicators. We need to consider the economic performance of Hong Kong as well, and there are also a number of indicators reflecting that. We need to consider other economic fundamentals. As for Mr. Chair's question, and in fact, the same question has been asked by other members. 
and uh, that's about the uh, trend in uh, property prices and um, whether um, um, there are uh, changes in property prices in uh, large units and smaller units. We have two um, documents and uh, we have the information in those documents. Now with the introduction of uh, double AVD, it was launched in February. In fact, in January and February, the accumulated increase on the whole was about 6%. And so small and medium sized flats, residential flats, uh, the increase was 6%. As for uh, large flats, um, the increase was 3%. From March to nine, uh, from March to September, for small and medium-sized flats, accumulated increase about two percent. For large flats, uh, March to September, a decline of two percent. From March to September, within six months, for the uh, property market as a whole. Um, Property uh, prices increased by 0.3% on average. As for September, there was a decline month to month of 0.3%, which has uh, bucked uh, the upward trend in the past four months. Um, as for shops um, and flats, uh, flat factories, the prices increased from 0.1% to 0.7%. Uh, the increase in comparison with the first two months of this year, 1.9% uh, to 4.1%, uh, there was a slowdown. As for 2012, um, the increase was um, 3 to 3.8%. Um, um, month to month. Members um, were concerned about uh, stabilizing property prices, uh, stabilizing the market. Now we have extended double AVD to non residential units, and members are concerned about the business users when they buy non residential property. And that may deter their investment, that may undermine the business environment, and that may undermine Hong Kong's competitiveness. And we are asked to make an assessment of that. Well, I've done that with our economists. Well, let me show you some numbers. In terms of the number of transactions and in terms of prices, concerning uh, non-residential property and also luxury units, we've seen a decline in transactions and also a stabilization in prices. Uh, the, um, uh, there is relief to the exuberance in the property market. As for the um, foreign investors, they, um, um, I have obtained data from the um, Invest Hong Kong and also the CNS department. As for the setting up of uh, regional headquarters, um, regional offices and local offices, uh, usually um, the Invest Hong Kong uh, did a survey in June, in 2011 June. Six thousand nine hundred. Um, in June 2012, it rose to seven hundred uh, seven thousand uh, two hundred and fifty, and in 2013, it rose to seven hundred seven thousand four hundred and fifty. So from July 2012 to July 2013, an increase of 2.7 percent. 
if we look at these figures, we can see that in terms of attracting foreign uh, investors to set up their offices in Hong Kong and doing business here, Hong Kong's competitiveness has been increasing um, stably. Um, concerning the professional groups, I say uh, the Law Society and the Bank uh, HCAP, Hong Kong Association Banks, um, came uh, to express their views in July and in uh, in June and in July we uh, replied to them, and we asked uh, by the members um, to uh, respond uh, to the technical points uh, raised by these professional groups. With regard to um, these matters, um, we have responded to the Law Society, and our response uh, has been attached to this paper. Since we introduced double uh, AVD in February, we met with the Law Society, in particular uh, the lawyers who participated in conveyancing, and we did a briefing for them, and the THB also met with them again in June. Um, we've announced the stamp duty measures for more than half a year in dealing with property transactions. Uh, the lawyers um, have assisted their clients uh, to deal with such um, matters relating to um, these stamp duty measures. And after the implementation of uh, the policy by law, um, we are we will also exchange our views with them. Um, another half year has nearly elapsed, and uh, we uh, will meet with them in December. I mean, the Law Society, in respect of um, the. Uh, matters dealing with property transaction relating to or related to uh, the stamp duty measures. And I will come back to this committee after the meeting. Uh, Mr. Teo, I've already started before you come in. Um, that's my introduction. Thank you. Five minutes each. Andrew Lang. Wang Ting Kuang, uh, uh, Tony Chair, Andrew Lam. Now the secretary has made a very detailed uh, reply. You refer to the indicators, say a basket of uh, indicators, uh, but you do not provide the details. You say you make reference to the basket, but after looking at the basket, you may just sit there and do nothing. What will trigger the abolition or the increase of the stem duty measures? As for regional headquarters, you mention the, num uh, the numbers. You say that from uh, June 2012 and uh, to June 2013, increase movement seven percent. In comparison with the speed of our economic growth, 2.7% is not high. In comparison with a previous performance, as it slowed down, and what about the numbers of our competitors, say Singapore? How many uh, such regional headquarters, uh, new regional headquarters, have uh, been um, set up? We need to look at. The competitors in the region. Are you able to provide the numbers? And will the administration take into account of these hard facts? And say when the regional headquarters have moved to or have all moved to Singapore, how should we respond? I thank Mr. Long for the question. Now, when we look at the indicators, um, we look at um, the uh, numbers from the uh, IRD 
and also the R um, and also the RV uh, rating valuation department RVD. We're looking at the numbers uh, very closely on a month to month basis. The THB, um, the Development Bureau, and also the departments concerned are uh, working very closely every month, or rather on a weekly basis, uh, and um, look at uh, the property market. As for the trigger for adjusting such measures, the um, SDH uh, came to a subcommittee on, or uh, came to a bills committee on the uh, stamp duty twenty uh, stamp duty amendment twenty twelve order uh, bill. He said that there will be an overall review after the implementation uh, has been in place for a year. And I agree with what Mr. Leung said, that um, to analyze Hong Kong's attractiveness to foreign investors, of course, we can't just look at the situation here. We need to look at our competitors, Singapore, the mainland, and other Asian countries. We need to look at their situations as well. So I would try to get more information on that and share them with you. Um, the government is very concerned, and we will consider our indicators and factors involving or that reflect on Hong Kong's economic performance. And we will also look at the amount of activities, investment activities here in comparison with um, you know their um, the extent of involvement in local economic activities by foreign investors. Well, I want to know about um, you know new whether you have figures available that can trigger you to actually withdraw from the market. Say the Federal Reserve uh, would say that when the unemployment rate uh, hits a certain point or when the inflation rate hits a certain point, then they will take certain action. So. In the same scenario, now you said you've looking, look, taken a look at a basket of um, factors. Uh, but Federal Reserve, on the contrary, is that that they will take certain action once uh, they hit a certain once a certain um, threshold is reached. Yes, thank you, Mr. Lam, for your question. I think the government, um, for it to come up with a concrete indicator or figure as a trigger. That's something unrealistic. I like to stress that when we consider when to withdraw from the market or make an adjustment, we would consult factors and indicators mentioned in our paper. That is, we would not just go for one single indicator because things do affect one another. So when we make an assessment, we need to come up with a comprehensive picture. We need to know the overall picture first. Well, so you do have some objective factors uh, for making a decision of whether to withdraw from the market. Yes, we do have objective factors, and these factors do um, are, they are interrelated. So we are not going to have a preconceived threshold at which uh, we would definitely uh, make adjustments or withdraw from the market. But definitely, whatever um, conclusions we've come up with, I will share them with the logical for a thorough discussion. Well, you know, you know, uh, activities in the U.S. affect the global economy. So, global economy economy is so complicated. Then, the Federal Reserve can come up with an objective indicator um, to actually provide some sort of, you know, indications for the whole world. So, I'm sure. Federal Reserve has to consider far more complex issues than us here. Oh, yes, Chairman, we would not comment on the U.S. situation. In Hong Kong, since we are a small open economy, apart from looking at our own local performance, 
Um, there are also external factors, including factors and situations in the U.S., actions taken in the States, for example, on the interest rates, or flow of um, capital, which constantly changes. That actually could have an effect on Hong Kong. And because Hong Kong is such a small and open economy, we need not only to look at the economic performance, but also the uh, demand for housing here. If the government assumes that once a certain point is reached and certain actions can be taken, that's something uh, unrealistic and difficult to do. So we need to be cautious in our assessment. Next one, Nanting Kuang. Yes, Chairman. Paragraph 5 in the paper. Um, I know that lately some developers have actually offered rebates to buyers. And in paragraph 5, it's that, that um, the measures have had a cooling effect on the property market. Has the uh, Bureau considered that um, your measures have already achieved its intended effects? And the rebates offered by developers lately would that uh, affect your implementation of the um, measures? Yes, as Mr. Wang Ting Kuang said, we have noticed um, that uh, individual developers have offered all sorts of incentives or measures to attract buyers. We know that on the whole, this. Is this, this is part of the sales strategies of the developers. We will not uh, actually uh, focus on particular strategies, but when a developer um, decides on how to sell their properties, besides rebates, their price levels, the number of units to be uh, put onto the market, all these reflect you know, um, the situation in the market. So as a market player, so developers are reacting to the trends. So we have to look at the overall picture and we will not respond to individual uh, practices or um, strategies by individual developers. Of course, we'll consider what happens, what's happening in the market when we do our assessment. And as I said, we would closely monitor on a weekly basis the number of transactions and the changes in property prices. We do put on record all these changes, and we have to look at objective data. That's an objective basis of our assessment. But I think the rebates offered by developers lately um, means actually or represent a kind of uh, offering or um, heading over of profits by the developers to the buyers. So profits have been high all along for developers. And also the land premium is also high. If the flour is high, then bread will also be more expensive. But if a bread is sold more cheaply, then um, that will eat into the profits of the bread makers. So the SSD and other measures aside, I think the high land premium policy, uh, have you considered actually making adjustments to the high land premium policy to offset the high property prices here? here? Chairman, well, as for the relationship between flour and bread, uh, Abraham Shek is next, ex an expert, but for land premium, um, often we've heard from various stakeholders on that. But let me point out that the flats union offered by developers actually were uh, built or invested in several years ago because the land was acquired several years ago. So that reflected the property market back then and not the situation now. Of course. Um, it's the Lands Department and the Development Bureau to set the level of 10 premiums. They have professional experts there in their departments. In assessing land premium, they would consult the latest market situation. Therefore, 
in the current the current property prices would be a factor considered in the um, decisions on future land premiums. As for the overall market and its interaction with the government setting of land premiums, there could be a time lag there. So today, Wang Ting Kuang just mentioned some developers now um, in selling their new properties, um, they of course have to consider the level of properties they want to get and they need to consider the cost um, that is land premium paid several years ago for the size as well. Next one, Chair Wai Chun. Thank you, Chairman and the government for providing us with the data. And the uh, trends in prices, price changes, shows that uh, large and medium-sized flats have had different trends. For small and medium-sized flats have seen prices continuing to go up even though the rate has uh, slowed down. So that the, the reflects the big demand for such type of units. The government said ultimately the ultimate solution is to increase supply. But let me ask you for the trends in prices. You know, property developers lately offered rebates and other incentives that give people the impression that prices have been reduced. So when you analyze the uh, trends, have you considered these new practices? Maybe you the price may on the surface as uh, do not seem to be on the uh the on the decline, but have they reflected the offer of rebates? And also, looking at the figure, there's a chart, a table that suggests that people, the buyers who hold Hong Kong permanent uh, ID cards, and the uh, proportion of those uh, with other properties in Hong Kong. But I look when I look at it, I wondered, say in 2013, the first half. There are quite a lot of people who bought properties for the first time. Does that reflect that the um, measures, the latest measures, you know, um, because for people who are first time buyers, they not pay that much stamp duty. Um, does that reflect anything on your measures? And just then you said that the government is wary about the uh, six-month period for acquisition before disposal. If the period is extended, you were worried that uh, if the long period is offered, then uh, that means a buyer can hold two properties at the same time. But the government needs to understand that holding two properties uh, means one may be living in one of those units. The government has said that it has to be a six-month period. It doesn't want people to buy some um, um, uncompleted flats um, as a place to move into later. But I think you need to be clearer on what the government really thinks on the issue. If whether people can actually try to move change flats by buying a, an uncompleted flat in advance. Okay, please stop there. Ms. Chen, thank you, Chairman. In response to Mr. Chair Wei Chun's question, I think last time you asked us to divide the flats into two categories to analyze the trends. Uh, the question is, uh, or rather, the question raised by Mr. Wang Ting Kuang concerning the concessions given by the developers, how can that? be reflected in the trend. The R and V department in conducting studies on prices of uh, property it uh, considers all factors including large developments and that um, it considers all the transactions. It is not just limited to um, the um, developments of individual developers, apart from um, so-called uh, primary market 
units, there are also secondary secondary market units. Um, whether the concessions of um, the um, in the primary market are reflected in the prices, I think um, they are um, being reflected and. There are different uh, developers selling all sorts of units. As for the point raised by Mr. Che, say when people buy uh, uncompleted flats, how many of them are non Hong Kong permanent residents and how many are Hong Kong permanent residents? Now, when people um, report they don't need to indicate whether it is an incompleted flat or not. Uh, but uh, we do know whether the property is purchased from the developer directly from um, 2011 to um, first half of 2013. We have seen an increase in comparison with overall um, Total number of property transactions from 2011. Hong Kong IC holders who don't own any uh, property uh, for 2013 is um, more than 50 percent, and in recent months, say in September, more than 70 percent. That has achieved our property, uh, our policy target. Um, several members have asked whether the grace period of six months can be extended further. We've ex we've explained our policy. We want to we want to adopt a, um, a rather uh, stringent approach. We don't want our targets to be undermined. Oh, on the other hand, uh, we don't want a policy to undermine, and at the same time, we don't want to be too harsh on those who want to uh, switch their properties. We know that some uh, who switch their property may need less than six months or more than six months. Uh, we need to make a decision, anyways, and we believe uh, that six months is a period. A uh, six-month period is uh, appropriate, and we have no intention to relax this. That's our position, and we have seen initial success with regard to our policy. And if we make any change, we are worried that it will undermine uh, the strength of our policy. I hope members uh, can understand this. Ms. Abraham Shek. Yes, I think the administration. And also, uh, Mr. Chairman, now we teach children not to tell lies, um, but uh, the um, worst case scenario is you believe in your own lies, and it will harm you. You look at the numbers, you believe you are successful, and you keep going down the wrong road. Say for the uh, Sam Duty Amendment Bill 2013, I think you impose a double um, AVD on residential units. Uh, that's still okay, but the problem is with non-residential uh, property. You have not shown us any justification for doing that on non-residential. Property. You have deterred investment. The SMEs have to rent offices. It is good for big developers. There will be um, the the um, SMEs will have to. A rent from big developers. Now you can see that 
There are industrial buildings being used unlawfully as offices, as uh, residential units. You have not assessed uh, the situation or the impact on non-residential uh, property. I have no objection against um, double stamp duty on residential property. But you have not been successful. Mr. Wang Teng Kwong has already explained. There is no change in price. They just pay uh, stamp duty or 70% of DSD um, on behalf of the buyer. The buyer has not paid less in terms of price of the property. There is no decline in property price. In fact, there is an increase. Now you have to provide the numbers. So how many units in the primary market, how many uh, units in the secondary market? You need to uh, show us the numbers. You mentioned 0.3%, uh, you say it's successful. Don't use the numbers to cheat yourself. Look at the real situation. Is it the World Bank? Yes, the World Bank. It says that um, DSD has undermined the competitiveness of Hong Kong. Now you say many companies are coming. Well, they just come here to set up a company, not making an investment. Now the the Canadian insurance company uh, brought in 4.3 billion dollars. They had to pay or they, they should have paid just 200 million in terms of stamp duty, but now they have to pay 3.8 or rather 380 million. Uh, statistics are lies and lies and lies. I have nothing against um, double stamp duty on residential property, but not a non-residential property. Your measures hinder the economic development of Hong Kong. Hong Kong need to Hong Kong needs to attract more foreign companies. Your DSD really increase their cost of investing in Hong Kong. Singapore has a lot of tax holidays to attract companies to invest there. We shouldn't do anything that undermines Hong Kong's economic development. When the investors come, they create wealth, and the wealth will be distributed to the people. Um, your figures cannot support your argument. Uh, Ms. Chen, well, just a um, quick response. Mr. Sheikh asks us not to look at numbers, but he does ask for numbers. Uh, what are the indications in the uh, non-residential market which showed buoyancy, and therefore we need to increase, uh, 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 enhance our measures in 2012? Um, offices, shops, and industrial property, the increase uh, per year is about 40% to 200% in 2012 just in a single year, more than 40% uh, or 200% over the long-term trend in comparison with the top in 1997, an increase, um, an increase of more than 20% uh, or even more. And that affects the overall business environment. We need to have demand management measure such as STEM duty to cool down the market. Well, I'm not talking about STEM duty. I'm talking about double STEM duty. It affects SMEs. Uh, a SME has to buy a, a piece of property uh, to do business.
and also land price. Why can't the administration control land price? Um, when you uh, put, when when you sell uh, a piece of land in the market, usually the price is more uh, forty percent more than uh, the estimate. You are the biggest landowner. Now um, you control the uh, supply of flour, and we uh, are bakers. We make bread. You don't control land price. That's your problem. High land price policy is your problem. Okay, you can wait in line. Uh, Mr. Kenneth Lang. Just now, Mabel, the Deputy Secretary, um, said that commercial property rose by about 70% uh, to 200%. Now, that's your um, data. Now, with the introduction of double stamp duty, how um, is the or uh, what is the uh, sensitivity of double stamp duty uh, in respect of commercial property prices? What is the impact on the average um, property price? You say you. Double stamp duty, you will uh, bring commercial property prices to a reasonable level. Now you mentioned seventy to two hundred percent. If I am a speculator, even if you have a four percent increase uh, in terms of stamp duty, I can still if I can still see property prices to. Arise above fifty percent, then I will still speculate. Unless you increase stamp duty by ten ten times. If I may respond to Mr. Leung's point concerning uh, the percentages in twenty twelve, I want to show that in twenty twelve, in the non-residential property market, the uh, increase and the exuberance. Uh, would uh, cause a very serious impact on the on business on the cost of doing business. We are not uh, going to change the so-called sensitivity in the non-residential property market. Now, after the introduction of our measures. Uh, from March to September 2013, whether it's residential property market or non-residential property market, the increase was just 0.1 percent per month. We can see a, a stabilization in the property market. We want to stabilize the a property market and the investment sentiment in the market. As for um, prices of property, at the end of the day, it is decided by the market, and we want to have a um, situation in which um, demand uh, or supply uh, matches the demand. We want uh, to stabilize the market. We um, want to slow down the um, rising prices. Now he asks you about sensitivity, and you say that it will not change sensitivity. But when you reply, you say that the trend has, uh, looking at the trend, it has stabilized. His question is why is two but not ten. Uh, you say stamp duty may not have an impact, and finally you say there is an impact, and you're right. Well, I really don't understand. Now, uh, to be more direct, Mr. Chairman. Now, the demand management measures 
were introduced in response to um, big uh, price increases and also big increases in number of transactions. We want to introduce these. We introduce these measures so as to enable the property market to uh, uh, develop in a healthy manner. Now, um, before our measures, there were substantial uh, increases, but after the measures, we have seen a stabling uh, situation. But the uh, measures do not aim at a certain uh, quantifiable particular uh, target. Well, I have never asked that. The, his question is why is ten, but not why is uh, two, but not ten. Do you think two um, is appropriate because it has stabilized, and therefore two is appropriate? Concerning um, the um, ABD, um, we make the same adjustment for residential and non-residential property. We uh, double, uh, we doubled the AVD. We also look at the practice in our neighboring countries or territories. Can we also make reference to um, the level of adjustments in the past? And based on those considerations, we proposed the um, double um, duty. Okay, I'll use my five minutes. Okay, following up on the point, I really don't understand Ms. Chen just then. Simply put, you just haven't answered the question. Like double or ten times or three times, which is better? And you said, I have considered a basket of um, factors. So, so have you really answered the question? So, so you you're saying it's all arbitrary, is it? But, but that could be an answer too. I mean, it's just all arbitrary. Maybe we can, you can, you can. Just say we will try double or three times or whatever. All we want is to see prices stabilize instead of fluctuating um, more widely. Is that what you're trying to say? I could take that as an answer, but I just like you to confirm that or to explain why is it double. Well. We will look at the um, well. We make a decision. We look at the existing tax rates, and we also know that um, the um, AVD covers residential and non-residential flats. Therefore, we're making a consistent adjustment. And also, because it's a very extreme measure, we want to um, be consistent in our application of the new measure, and we don't want to. Um, Actually, have inconsistencies in what we do, so that's from that's the basis of a decision on the uh, AVD. Is it one point? Okay, based on your principle, then is it does it have to be two, or can we opt for one point five or three? So why is it not one point five or three? Consistency can mean one point five and three. So in other words, you have answered my question. Why is it two double and not three or ten? Chairman, I've tried to answer your question, but excuse me. If you say that, you know, I thought about you can say that. I thought about a hundred answers. Maybe you can say that well, this is just um, a, a test, or it could be an incremental change. But you may just you could answer that. You know, I'm just using two um, as a trial. But if you've did not say that, and all you, all you said was it's all scientific. But, but how can you convince me that uh, two is not an arbitrary measure? Or well, it doesn't really matter if, even if it's arbitrary, as long as it's effective. Maybe your thinking is that uh, if two that doesn't work, then you'll change it to three, or you can go to one point five later. But you still haven't given me a definite answer. Is that what you think? What's your main consideration, Chairman? Let me try to supplement during our um, um, decision-making process. We're not just um, playing it, you know, through trial and error alone. Only we need to look at, consider 
whether the measures would have um, intended effects. So, have you carried out a projected test or sensitivity test on two on the figure two? Have you carried out a test on one point five and three? Um, as I said before, we considered we have considered the existing tax rates. And uh, um, different levels of tax rates for different types of properties, and as I said earlier, uh, we also want to have consistency in our measures, and we need to uh, try to get balanced effects. So before uh, when we we need to look at it before whether we had already adjusted the stamp duty. So when the government decided on the measures, we did think carefully about all these factors. Well, I can. Um, actually, no, no, I can tell you more about our process of um, consideration. No, uh, I'm, I'm not asking about the process. I'm asking whether why is it not 1.5 and 3? You must have an analysis behind it. If you if it's just an arbitrary figure, you just want to try two out of the blue alone. I can accept that answer. But if you're saying that no, this is not really arbitrary, then please. Give us some data, objective data, to back up your decision, because some members may think that 1.5 is a better alternative. So we need to compare whether 1.5 is better or worse than two, or whether three is a better choice. It could be ten as well. But if you think that, or if you say that ten is too extreme, then why do you think it's too extreme? You need to tell us why. I'm just saying that. This figure of two should have been uh, proposed with a more, along with a more detailed analysis. Okay, after the meeting, I will try to come up with um, um, more details for you. Wang Tingkuang, second round of questioning. Second round. Uh, each person will have five minutes. Well, okay. I think the the administration is just giving us a very um, sweeping statement. How did you come? To, you you could have said that uh, you came up with the figure two because you didn't want to cause harm to the market. But anyway, at the previous meeting, I mentioned the issue of um, selling a flat to get another one, and uh, you said that you have to stick to the six month period, grace period. Then my question is. Okay, if I uh, buy a new flat, in a new existing flat, existing flat in six months, I can do that. But if I'm buying an incompleted flat, then where can I move to if it's not completed yet in six months' time? You're know, saying that if you buy an incompleted flat. Then the period involved should be uh, starting. Should start from when the entry permit is given. So six months after the entry permit is given. So you're saying oh, the occupation unit is given. So you can um, prescribe six months for completed flats, but for uncompleted flats. The six period can apply to you. You're saying that you're going to sell an old flat and buy a new flat, even if it's an uncompleted flat that you've bought. You're saying that because it's not yet ready for occupation and your old flat cannot be disposed of. Therefore, Mr. Chen, you understand his point. That is, even if someone has bought a new flat, if the flat won't be available until eighteen months later, then the six month period should begin. Um, in the yeah, should begin uh, after the eighteen months when the occupation permit is available. Yes, when the flat is available eighteen months later, then you will count the six month period from the date when the premises is available for occupation. Yes, is that okay? Would you consider that? And also, the administration also said that um, you don't want people to own two properties. At the same time, but the six-month period.
period is applied when after you have given the administration the stamp duty. And of course, I'll be given some rebates after I've uh, moved into the new flat. So in other words, if I'm willing to pay the um, additional stamp duty, I should be entitled to owning several properties. You said that you don't want people to own more than one property at the same time, but I think your rationale is pretty weak. I think as long as I'm willing to pay you the extra stamp duty, then you have no right to restrict the number of properties I can have. So, um, the DAB supports the uh, double stamp duty measures, but I also need to uh, point to you the um, you know practicality of the issue, and we need to be realistic. I hope that the administration can consider relaxing the six month period. Uh, you know, for example, by uh, specifying when exactly the six month period can begin, uh, particularly in reference to uncompleted flats. Yes, of course, if it's an uh, yeah, if it, if it's a completed flat, of course, six months is fine. The six month period is fine. But for flats without occupation permits, how can you limit it to six months? So the six months to begin after the occupation permit is made ready. Yes, I know Mr. Wong's point. I think in um, implementation and in trying to achieve our policy effects, I I think uh, when the bill is under scrutiny, uh, I think uh, we know we we've, we've noted Mr. Wong's point. Of course, we'll consider in the actual drafting of the provisions, and we will also. Um, Pay attention to our concept all along. Our whole purpose is to have a stringent six month period for changing flats. And under that principle, as to uh, whether we need to accommodate various special circumstances where they can be listed out in the provisions, I think later on, when we begin our clause by clause scrutiny period, in this business committee, we would. I'll, I'll be happy, willing to uh, discuss further with you. Do you want to think about doing the uh, clause by clause scrutiny period? But I want you to think about it now at this stage. I, I, I think the administration can propose a CSA itself. If you are willing to propose a CSA, then I hope that you can actually. Um, let us know and and be specific about that. Yes, I think on your point. I think at our um, next meeting we would provide some preliminary responses. And let me also point out that now we are at the drafting of the um, the drafting stage. So we need to have we need to have our discussions based on concrete provisions. Well, I think it's a matter of how it, it's a different matter how you want to uh, word the provisions. What I was trying to um, say is that, well, I think Mr. Wong is not just concerned about the drafting. He just wanted to see what your policy is. You know, whether you are concerned about people's housing needs or whether you're more concerned about whether people should be allowed to own two properties at the same time. As I said, you can't stop people from owning two properties by law. Yes, I think Ms. Chen needs to um, tell us what they think. From what perspective do they look at the issue? And Mr. Wong's point was that uh, whether you would tackle the issue from the ownership perspective or from the accommodation perspective. Okay, I think we'll look into the matter, and next time we will give you more details on what we think. Next one, I think um, 
Well, just then when I make a simple point that DS said、uh, she would not consider my viewpoints, but now Mr. Wong made a simple point and she said she would consider it. Well, I'm just trying to tell you that, you know, what I think. Okay, I was just telling you what I think, but don't don't be bothered. So I think the DS maybe didn't understand what I was saying, but well, Mr. Wong is more experienced and she knew what he meant. Now, concerning the analysis of property prices, I find her analysis very disappointing. She said that the concessions will not、uh, affect the overall trend,、um, and the concessions are just small. I want to say that、uh, for a certain period of time,、um, property transactions in the primary market account for just、uh, more than ten percent. Of the overall number of transactions, you may say it is not very influential, but in launching、um, the sale of units in the primary market, they, the arrangements may cause a strong impact、uh, on the market, and the concessions are also very important. Now the R and A. Uh, R and V department、um, in analyzing the、um, property market、uh, will not look at certain、uh, arrangements in、uh, the market. I don't believe that is the case. If the arrangement has an impact on property prices, according to the administration. Uh, for those who switch property,、um, the double stamp duty will be refunded when、um, one has completed uh, the um, uh, the switching transaction by selling the、uh, old property. Now, but if、uh, you buy a piece of new property. And then you sell that new piece of property again, while you keep、uh, holding the old piece of property. And then you will not、uh, have the refund. I want to clarify this with the administration. As for buying from the、uh, developers,、uh, about twenty percent in twenty eleven and thirty percent in twenty twelve. About eighty or seventy or eighty percent of the people who buy one piece of property and then. Uh, and then buy another one from the developer. Well, beg pardon.、Uh, in fact, about seventy、uh, percent buy property from the、um, developer. Seventy percent of them buy. Seventy、uh, percent of them do not own any other property. But when they buy from the developer, they buy usually they usually buy uncompleted complete flats. I hope the bureau、um, will pay attention to this. And there is a trend of buying property by companies, or in the name of companies. When stamp duty is so high, people may own property through owning a company, and then when they sell the company, they can dodge tax. I think Mr.、Um, Sheikh's amendment is considering this perspective. I think the trend is that、um, people own properties through a company, and then by selling the company,、um, they can dodge the stamp duty.、Uh, Miss Chen, do you monitor this in respect of? I mean,、um, what is it?、Um, I mean,、uh, the buying of property via a company is there a rising trend? Uh, whether it's in the primary market or the secondary market. Well, in in fact,、uh, there was a discussion on the stamp duty amendment bill twenty twelve. On this, we look at the transactions of property. We look at non Hong Kong ID card holders, and also、um, the companies involved in purchasing、uh, property. 
before we launch stamp duty amendment 2013 bill, buying property through a company, um, the number of transactions accounted for about 10 percent of the total number. With the launching of the BSD and also DSD, um, those who don't hold any Hong Kong ID and also those uh, uh, which are companies, the percentage declined to 3 percent. So in fact, uh, buying a property through a piece of property through, com through a company has declined. Uh, Mr. Chair worries uh, that uh, it will go up, but in fact it has gone down. Please give us the numbers. Uh, Ms. Abraham Shek. Well, uh, we have to wait and see. We cannot look at it just for, um, for a month. In fact, Mr. Chair has made a similar proposal to that of Mr. Wong, but Mr. Wong uh, is a member of a big political party. And if you join us, then we'll have eight votes and we will become a big party. I hope the administration can give us the number. Now, because of DSD, those who are HKPR and who buy property for the first time has risen from 50% to 70%. Well, there's a loophole. People don't buy property, but they just uh, let, uh, their, let other people to use their ident identity to buy property. Say for uh, the re, uh, the concessions or so-called rebates given by the developers, uh, uh, the uh, um, developers try to get round the arrangement. Many non-Hong Kong permanent residents are deterred by the. Um, uh, BSD, but um, the developer gives concessions. The developer gives concessions. Uh, there is a seventy percent discount on the uh, stamp duty. The administration show us the information. How will that affect? the market. And I do not comment on the residential um, market. What about the non-residential uh, market? I think the transactions are mainly conducted by companies rather than by um, individuals. You want to prevent non-Hong Kongers from buying the property? But you don't want, you you don't target at the Hong Kong companies. They are making their investment. They are not speculators. You need to provide the data concerning non-company and companies, and also um, you should um, show us the age profile of the first-time home buyers. These are the loopholes. Well, if I may address one or two points. Concerning switching property, our analysis uh, is done in response to uh, the sub the, the bills committee, not to an individual member. Um, your views will be considered and will be uh, responded to. Well, I'm speaking this to Mr. Tony Chair. As for uh, the uh, proportion of buyers who hold Hong Kong IC and bought residential property from developer did not own any property in Hong Kong when purchasing the residential properties, these are individuals. They are the buyers. Um, they are not companies. Um, there are a few uh, individual buyers who buy through trustees. I know that the issue has been thoroughly discussed 
at the meeting of another uh, bills committee. Now the analysis is on individual buyers, but not on companies. Uh, Mr. Andrew Lang. I think for the BPA, our position is quite simple. When there is an imbalance in the property market, um, the administration introduced certain demand management measures. They are acceptable. Now, in November, the um, 11th of November uh, this year, the administration explained or that the CE in meeting um, the business sector said that there were not enough land. And you saw reports uh, that they were uh, f uh, scrambling for land at the uh, in on the airport island. The DSD um, affects the SMEs. You don't allow them to buy. You impose uh, a tax on them. You stop them from doing business. If they do business, they want development. And you don't have a policy that do, you will do away with it in, uh, within five years. First, you scramble for land to build uh, uh, HOS, PRH. So, do you uh, um, uh, uh, are you forcing the uh, SMEs to buy a property in Shenzhen to buy offices in Shenzhen? Well, if I'm doing good business, I have to buy offices. Uh, but you penalize me by double stamp duty. If it is just two years, okay, I will. Uh, bear with it for two years. Now, and if you don't allow them to buy, then they have to rent. And if they rent, there is a higher demand, and then the rent goes up. Now you say there is no rise in property prices, but the SMEs are suffer, are suffering. They are forced to pay higher rents. They have money. They want to buy offices, but they are penalized. You don't. Have any indicator showing when you will stop it? You will stop these harsh measures. Well, if it is two years, then they will wait for two years. Now, if you have these uh, shorter measures, we still can accept it. But in the long term, you have no answer. Now, the FS said a few years ago that they would move away from Wen Chai and leave the site. Uh, for re uh, for commercial property development, but nothing has been done. No timetable, and even if a decision is made today, uh, uh, the property will only be available ten after ten years. And also for the so-called government hill, uh, the environmental um, groups oppose, and then everything is held up. And also the uh, competition authority use the. Uh, prop, uh, the the property, uh, but uh, there are more rats in those property than humans. You you just uh, strangle the development of business. Are there any um, medium term measures uh, so that you can withdraw from the market? As far as I know, in terms of uh, land for commercial use. Uh, the government is very keen to get more land. In fact, there are different calls for uh, land for different purposes. Say, uh, moving um, the uh, industrial buildings to Kaitak development uh, that will be completed in twenty, uh, say fourteen fifteen. In fact, uh, part of the um, ILD. Will move to Chengpano from Wen Chai very soon. Certain uh, uh, details will be submitted to the council so that the projects can go ahead. In February, uh, the FS uh, announced the measures and said that they were extraordinary measures, extraordinary time. And such measures will be suitably reviewed and adjusted. We hope 
that the market will stabilize very soon, and it will um, develop in a healthy manner. Um, we can then uh, adjust the. We, we can then uh, review the rates, and we agree that after the measures have been implemented for a year, there will be a comprehensive review on the demand management measures. Thank you. Members, I didn't know that I would chair this meeting today because uh, Ms. Lee, because of another appointment, she notified me that I was to hold this meeting. But because uh, I was expecting to be a member instead, and so I, I had an appointment arranged for the lunch time. So she, for a sharing, just me there at the lunch meeting, so therefore it is an, it's a talk. Therefore, I need to um, discuss with you. Of course, I knew Miss Dari Lee cannot come back to chair this meeting. What should we do now? Should we get a colleague after I leave at quarter after twelve to chair the meeting till quarter to one, or should we adjourn the meeting earlier than scheduled? So, what do members think? Let's discuss this first. Mr. Zhang, well, that's just you and me here. I'm preparing to leave. Well, I think um, some members may come back in, so I'm preparing to leave anyway. And there's nobody sitting around us. We may not have a quorum. Maybe uh, if you ask me, I think maybe um, we can adjourn the meeting earlier because I need to leave quarter after 12 anyway. I know sometimes. You know, I I'm I'm having three meetings at the same time today, this morning, but I'm here to chair the meetings. So I'm I'm supposed to go to the other two, but I can't go there anyway. And I've got an appointment later, so maybe maybe I'll just discuss with the administration. And uh, we may we maybe we adjourn the meeting at quarter after, Mr. Chair. No objection. Yes, let's adjourn this meeting quarter after. Do you have questions? Yes, I have questions for the administration. Okay. I think for the uh, six month period for changing flats, I hope that the administration can consider the views. Last time a member mentioned that, um, you know, um, sometimes um, the number of transactions varies from time to time, and so whether someone can dispose of a flat. In the period is questionable. Maybe you can say you can slash the prices, but that's not how we would address the issue. We you want to see prices stabilize, right? So if, for example, in the past, before the uh, uh, special measures were introduced, you know, for new and old flats, uh, you know, uh, the volume could be more than now. Now the volume of the transactions has contracted. So in the past. It's maybe easier. It was easier for people to dispose of a flat within a six-month period, maybe by redux, uh, by offering a three or five percent discount. But now, is it the same? Is it as easy as before? The number of transactions has fallen. So you you could easily buy a flat now, or you can even go for a bargain price. But if you want to sell it, sell a small unit, then you may not be able to do so, as you like. Because even if you get a tax rebate, that may not cover um, the um, reductions in price that you may have to offer. So, so I think six months may not be a realistic period for someone to change flats. Now, if reasonable switching of flats is not uh, is not practical. Then you, the, the administration could consider extending the six-month period. Wang Teng Kong was saying that um, the uh, period can be extended for an uncompleted flat. But even if it's a completed flat, maybe there's no buyer for it. And especially if I'm selling an old flat, and developers are selling new flats with lots of rebates, that makes it even harder for me to dispose of my old flat. So the second-hand Market is different, so maybe the administration can consider all these consider uh, these um, possible situations. Even if you think that um, 
you know, think about how to relax this period. Maybe someone is living in an old flat and wants to move to a new flat, but it's not that I'm buying uh, um, a new flat, you know, getting a new ownership for a purpose of speculation. But there are a lot of people, you know, who are actually thinking of getting a new flat or uh, buying another flat to uh, as a place for them to move in. So, or maybe someone wants to have two properties at the same time. Of course, there's a chance of speculation, but there's also the chance of pers a person wanting to live in a new flat. And and if the prices go up, then the person who's got a new flat or uncompleted flat who's not yet ready for occupation, then he may also stay or he may stay in his old flat for the time being. Now you have an enhanced SSD. If you have an enhanced, now with the enhanced SSD, as a measure against speculation. So I would strongly support Wang Ting Kuang's point. For, uh, of course, you should extend a six month period for um, old flats, completed flats, because the number of transactions in these old flats is limited anyway. Yes, um, yes, I know what you're saying, but we need to be cautious and have a careful assessment of the situation. Abraham Sheck just then mentioned that we should not just look at data, but chairman. I'm sure you understand that we do. You, I'm sure you understand we do need to look at data. And in the past, we've also given statistics to this committee uh, on the time needed for uh, a person to change flats. So, and um, we've done a lot of research and found out about um, the time involved in disposing of an old. Flat to get a new flat. I know before six months might be enough, but now with the reduced number of transactions, you know there are so many more transactions before there were so many potential buyers to buy you know all sorts of flats, but now um, the number of potential buyers has dropped. So if you want to dispose of a flat now, you have fewer buyers waiting for you, you know at a certain price. I'm sure. You said that six months was okay before, but now the situation has changed. The number of potential buyers has come down. Six months, therefore, may be uh, not enough. Wanting Kwan, do you have other questions? I think, yeah, 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 we just raised some practical issues. Yeah, okay, let me make one more point here. So, um, here. Just then, uh, Member Chair Wai Chin. Uh, and others mentioned about the uh, rebates offered by developers. I hope that you will consider carefully. You know, SSD was introduced, and then BSD was announced, and there is the enhanced SSD and AVD. You know, for residential and non-residential properties, and then lately, developers began to offer rebates. Um, to cover the tax. So I think now you have to look at uh, the situation after all these measures have been introduced. Because if we just put it generally, that, you know, we need to be careful about how the market has absorbed the various rates, additional rates. Remember, for some figures, you know, whatever figures you have, uh, I mean, latest figures after the measures have been introduced, you need to incorporate them. Whether, you know, for example, that can help you understand whether the market is as overheated as before. And also, there could be all kinds of rebates. And the rebates represent a kind of discount. 
So in other words, prices have been actually on the decline. So that's also one factor that you need to look at. I'm not saying that you should quantify everything, but to us, this is an indicator for you. Uh, you know, even colleagues may think that. Back to my previous question, maybe we should not have double the duty. Maybe we should just go for one point five times the duty. Because otherwise, the market could crash. You want to stabilize the market, right? So I hope that you can actually, you know, you know, give us uh, more um, different sorts of data collected at different periods of time. And I hope that uh, you can um, give the figures in such a way that uh, you know a careful breakdown. That would be helpful. Then that could be more accurate benchmarks for us. Okay. Well, I can stay here only till um, twelve fifteen. If you have questions, you have five minutes. If not, no. Okay. If not, then Mr. Wong, any questions? Okay. Let me uh, declare this meeting adjourned. Excuse me, because I can't stay any longer. I did not expect to be here till quarter to one. Let me apologize. Unless uh, both of you, one of you, want to be uh, a chairman, if there, you have no questions, then let's uh, adjourn the meeting. Yes, I've heard a lot of questions, and we'll we'll do our work and prepare for the next meeting, and we we'll give you the details, answers next time. We do hope that we can begin the close by close scrutiny as soon as possible, and we can look at the delicate details then. Next meeting, Starry Lee will be back to chair the meeting, and I hope that we can you know get on with our work sooner. Okay. Okay, we've reflected all we wanted to say. Thank you. Meeting adjourned.